Each, each. Good morning, it's 10 01 a.m. on Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Call this meeting of the Wichita County Commissioner's Court to order. I would ask everyone to rise, but they've already done so. Uh and Cannon, please get our invitation, sir. We'll pray with you, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings, Lord. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you, Lord, for the rain that we received this week. It's been it's been very a blessing for our land, Lord, and a blessing for our lakes. We just ask for more more rain. You know that we need, Lord. And this this uh, this special time, Lord of Easter, I thank you for your Son Jesus that died for us, Lord, to let us have life that we can only get through His through Him, Lord. We just give you thanks and all that, Lord. Please be with us today as we make the best decisions we can for the county. Give us wisdom, Lord, and uh, patience. Uh, just give us wisdom, Lord, and make, make the right decision, Lord. All this we ask for your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Please join us for the pledge to the U.S. flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now to pledge to the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. All right, everyone, you may be seated. Uh, we experienced Oh, you got the we second got, one? Yeah. No, we got the other one. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know there was one. There's several there. Okay. <laughs> All right, at this time, I would like to ask our county treasurer, Stephen Jones, to come forward. We are recognizing five years of service to Wichita County. Doesn't seem like five years. <laughs> 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 what the heck? Yes, you uh, no, and Stephen, you uh, were in. Well, you were in the office. Oh, yeah. Prior, yeah. Well, about two lifetimes ago. Yeah. Okay. Well, we do cumulative by the time. So. No. But each one. Um, and so, as we normally do, we we do like to recognize the milestones of folks when they uh, put in certain amount of time. Uh, certain amount of time uh, at various points uh, in the county service because uh, this is a family and we um, we like to recognize people who are in the family a little longer. Um, so do you want to say anything, Stephen? Well, I've got the, the floor. I know we give you the floor for fun presentations every now and then. Right, yeah, now. Okay. <laughs> a man of many words. <laughs> uh, Stephen's appreciated getting to know you uh, over the last year and um, even though you're doing five, I have not had five years of county service yet. But I've enjoyed getting to know you and appreciate uh, the attitude you bring and coming in and, and trying to do what's best every day. So every one of us. Yeah, thank you. Do you want to make it? Thank no. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do really thank you for your for the reports. I do think yeah, there are a lot I more reports are areas, and I appreciate that. Very understanding, yeah. easy to follow, and boy, that, that makes yeah. a difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And correct. That, that's important too. So. Yeah. And we do have our investments within guidelines now. Good job. And I appreciate the humor from time to time. Because <laughs> it gets a little serious yeah. here sometimes. Yeah, I have a hard time being serious. <laughs> All right, well, we do that. And I think Nancy is ready to. I'm going to move to not from the television this time. Can you hold up your county treasurer? <laughs> 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 Second week in a row, we're going to push the recognition, the pre other presentation that's on the agenda. We want to keep people guessing on what we're actually going to do. Okay. It <laughs> better be a big party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is now 10:06. I would open up this time for public comment. We remind everyone that public comments need to be limited to five minutes or less, and the commissioner's court cannot take action on any item brought up during public <coughs> comment. Do we have any public comment this morning? I've got one, Judge. Yes, sir. I had the pleasure of being with uh, the leadership Wichita Falls group last Saturday for a deal they had, and we talked a little bit about rural Wichita County and uh, the agribusiness that's here, and it was a great experience, and uh, those people are engaged and interested, and they will be our future leaders. They will 
sat on this court, sat on the city council and all that, but it was a great experience. It's good. It's good. Uh, I have some sort of related news. I heard yesterday that uh, as, far to, as part of our ag extension uh, agent search that uh, Texas A&M AgriLife is doing, uh, they did respond favorably to uh, our request that they open up that job for external applicants. So uh, hopefully that will mean we can get uh, yeah. more applicants in sooner. Yeah. Uh, that's an important, important role that needs to be filled. Right. And Judge, I have one uh, comment too. Dwayne's uh, here, and I know co a collaborative effort, but I want to remind everyone that, um, let's see, what, what night did the storm come in? Sunday, Sunday. night? Yeah. Um, so I am, the guys are all outside and the girls are all inside and I asked my wife do you not have the radio I mean you're not watching she said well I get I've got my uh, yeah with the app the the alert that we do and she said it's not um, doing it did but she said at the time it hadn't gave her any notice or anything like that and that is an option for all county citizens to have, and they can be alerted when they're uh, done. And uh, Dwayne, I appreciate you and Lynn's keeping us. The sheriff is, y'all are great about it too. David, you flip that stuff and uh, let us see it. And so that's really good. But sit, all citizens in Wichita County can take that and that be, keep themselves updated to the minute. You're talking about code red. Code yeah. red. And there's a link to it on our homepage at the county website too, where you can uh, install and, and enroll. Yeah. And situation. this court this court helps with the the able to afford the nine one one, you know, is able to come on board and help us with that. So yeah. Just yeah. brief comment. Uh, tobacco permanent settlement trust approved uh, our distributions for this year, which is about a 4.5% increase over distributions of previous year. So mm -hmm. we'll see, may not see a total increase in dollars. It depends on our spending, but a 4.5% increase in, in our our cut. Revenues. Yeah. Good deal. And Commissioner Beecham, thank you for serving on that on that statewide board. With, we're, we're blessed at this body that we've got in the commissioners all over the place who serve on statewide entities and that really does help us um, in the in the long run so thank you all any other public comments this morning I've got one. yes sir sure um, I just want to say uh, we I really appreciate the court on our selection of our emergency management coordinator Wayne Burkenfield he's 90 days in so to speak he has no idea out there. <laughs> <laughs> But his, his uh, positive response to all the county fire departments and, of course, the sheriff's office in, in uh, notifying us or going right out to something, uh, especially at the night times, he's, he's been so active. And uh, I just really, uh, we're really blessed to be able to have a man like him that's with his uh, caliber and his experience what he does with emergency services. And I think that uh, we, we could have done a better job than picking somebody. But you know, he said he's going to grow up with some hair one day. But, <laughs> yeah, there, there's a limitation on that around here, apparently. <laughs> but, he, but, he's, but he's definitely a good communicator with us, and uh, we were supporting him. Uh, we've actually had him involved in some of the uh, standoff where he had to help us uh, put some fire fire department tarps, you know, the heavy tarps, around a couple of bins on top of the house that we're putting tear gas in to get this guy out of the attic. And, and uh, he almost walked off the job that day when I told him they were going up. And, and, uh, <laughs> so, uh, we did the guy didn't have a firearm, he just wouldn't come out of that attic of the house, but uh, we got him out of there, and uh, it was kind of a, uh, a three hour, four hour deal, but it, we wouldn't be able to take care of it. But, but he, he didn't back down from it, and, and uh, he was used to fire and flames rolling out of the roof. He was expecting gunfire, but we knew he didn't have a gun, but he didn't know that. But he, he still got up here and did his job, and, and I really appreciate that. And everybody else up there was quite amazed at uh, the role he's already taken over. How he's I know he's learned some playing still, but for us and the public safety side of it, he's just been outstanding with us. And I, he has no idea that I'm talking about that, but uh, he's, he can speak on his own. I'd be asked for the next 10 minutes if he wants to. But Dwayne, I appreciate everything he does. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's funny. I was looking at and it. Just, Dwayne has not even been full time for four weeks yet because uh, we had that transition period where he was part time. Uh, 
sure it feels a little longer than that. <laughs> but yeah, doing a great job, Dwight. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Any other public comments this morning? Okay. It is 10 11. The public comment is closed. So at this time, let us move on to the consent agenda. Does anyone have any questions about any items on the consent agenda? Item five, just the wording. Uh, we're, we're not technically abolishing the court order. We're modifying it. Because we're just, we're moving it from commissioner's court to the auditor's office to make those purchases. That is true. Okay. So we're just in the same order. Yeah, the order is still intact. It's just modifying the order. Okay. She just wanted to read motion to modify court motion order. Motion to modify. And that's yeah. the same as everything. Yeah. Everything else. Does anyone have any objection to that change to number five? No. Okay. Do you want to say a word on number six, the City View and a local cooperation agreement? I just want to thank uh, Tommy and Nikki for their work with City View trying to iron out what what was needed on, on their end as well as on ours to, uh, to get that agreement uh, in a good spot. Then. We're satisfied that it is. Very. Motion to approve. Second. With the change of five. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Finkannon, seconded by Commissioner Beecham to approve the consent agenda as amended. Get that change to number five. Does anyone have any questions or comments about the motion or any of the items on the consent agenda? Okay, motion is before us. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries 5-0. All right, moving on to general business. Item number one, discuss, consider, and or take action to approve and ratify the minutes of the March 19, 2024 regular session and the March 22, 2024 special session. Does anyone have any changes to make those minutes or anything on that item? Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Beecham, seconded by Commissioner Finkannon to approve and ratify the minutes of March 19, 2024 and March 22, 2024 sessions. Any questions or comments on the motion or the item? All right, the motion is before us. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Item number two, review and approve the regular bills for payment, verify payroll taxes have been filed, and order county treasurer to disperse payroll and or bills within 72 hours via US mail, FedEx, UPS, or electronically, unless directed otherwise, or may be picked up and ledgered in the treasurer's office. Motion to pay our bills. Second. <laughs> well, it surprises me a little bit when uh, the, that voice of, of right. Mahler comes oh. out. <laughs> That's an important one. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> All right, we've got a motion by Commissioner Mahler, seconded by Commissioner Finkannon, to pay the bills and all the other uh, verbs in that sentence. Do we have any questions on the motion or the item? Okay. The motion is before us. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries 5-0. Item number three, discuss, consider, and or take action to approve plans for the Charlie O. Ferris pedestal and walkway. Commissioner Beecham? Yeah, I have Ann here to, to speak to this. Um, we're getting close to starting that project. It's Easy. been been several years in, in, in the making, so. I'm hesitant to put dates on anything, but I think 2024 is looking very good. Um, the plans that I've just given to Commissioner Beecham uh, were in your packet, but I wanted to bring some for you to see as well. Um, we have hired Corlett, Probst, and Boyd to it's not a survey, um, but to sort of create some plans for us so that the next step will be to go ahead and get some concrete for it. Um, take another big step forward on this project. Um, so those are the plans that we brought to you today. Our plan is to mirror the 
memorial on the other side so it will be directly across from it um, the only uh, difference between the two that the sizes are the same is that the sidewalk onto it will be extended a little bit longer to get into it simply because you do have the fiber that's laid there we figure it'd be easier to jackhammer we <laughs> my idea uh, we, we, we did uh, think it would be a little bit easier if we needed to place replace small sections of concrete if that fiber needs repair to be laid again um, rather than to put it underneath the slab itself so that sure. extends uh, about nine feet rather than I think the other one is seven feet to get into the, the base for that sculpture it makes good sense um, thank you I thought so uh, you can see here that we do plan to have a plaque pedestal there. We're not quite sure what's going to go there. Maybe some information about the artist, maybe information about Ms. Ferris. Um, so we're, that's, we're open on that one, but we did want to make sure we had something there where we could recognize the county's role in this project and Ms. Ferris's role as well in this county. Um, Please don't ask me any of the engineering specs. I am not <laughs> the uh, expert on that. But we are looking uh, forward to uh, moving ahead with this next step and um, happy to take any other non-engineering related questions. Um, one, of the, <laughs> one of the things I would like to ask is can we move the historical marker to that location? It makes perfect sense that the historical marker would be in that plaza. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Mark. That tells the story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great idea. Well, and we're also excited letting you know now the sculptor, um, Mr. Dixon, we've talked about him before. He's got work at the Smithsonian. He just completed Emily Rose or the Emily Morgan sculpture for the Alamo Foundation in San Antonio. Uh, he has the model. It has gone to the foundry, which is where they pour the bronze. Um, he is making a few fixes. It is it is very, very tall. It is going to be nine feet tall, but I, I do think with the open expanse of the courthouse space, it's going to look really, really wonderful. So we're excited. It's exciting. And the dead tree that was in front of it was taken I out saw that yesterday. Week, so. I, I, I asked, <laughs> I nicely asked my coworker, Nadia, to go out there. She's about five and a half feet tall yeah. and hold a... Uh, yardstick up so I could see how tall it it'll, was going to be and I said oh the trees look great <laughs> they present so, really well the, yeah. Yeah. So, the tree so we, we, we've, we've scoped it out we're envisioning it and it's, yeah. it's really going to be lovely um, we do so have is, spaces yeah. here for the to mirror the landscaping um, and we'll discuss Commissioner Beecham, Beecham and I will discuss landscaping and how we can incorporate that as part of this project and have it all ready to go yes. Um, again, a little hesitant to put a date on anything, but the sculptor is confident the sculpture will be poured by June or July. And so we're hoping for fall, early winter installation. Awesome. There was a question that you had for me this morning that I would like to ask Mel while he's sure. here. Um, question about um, going out for bids for the concrete work since the county's a participant can we go out for bids on their behalf or are are they going to have to seek the bids for the concrete work themselves okay we're fine either way we just want yeah. to make sure we're we're doing by the book on it okay well can we check into that yeah. and see so so that explains the call the sheriff got yesterday about some person standing on the lawn holding a stick. <laughs> <laughs> it was us. I have pictures if anyone would like to see that it. We'll right Nadia's yeah. face to protect her privacy. <laughs> well, this is an exciting project uh, honoring someone that's so very important to our history, and not only our history, but the history of the entire country. Absolutely. She, she was a pioneer that we are blessed to have as part of our county courthouse history for sure. So I'd make the motion to approve uh, this presentation, uh, the location for the Charlie O'Ferris Memorial Plaza on Second. the courthouse lawn. Second. All right. Commissioner Beecham has made the motion to approve the plans for the Charlie O'Ferris pedestal and walkway. Commissioner Mahler has seconded. Do we have any questions or comments on the motion or the item itself? Okay. The motion's before us. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. 
Motion carries five thank you. zero. And thank you so much. Thank you. And you should be straightening a camera up or something. <laughs> Where are they? I can do that. I have a flashback. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Item number four, discuss, consider, and or take action to approve and issue a purchase order for Armour Solutions proposal number 1054 in the amount of $7,596 to seal the floors in the HVAC mechanical rooms to be paid from Department 510 with lines determined by the county auditor. Uh, I think Ricky presented on this last week. Uh, maybe it was two weeks ago, but yeah. uh, then the opportunity to do this while they're replacing. Right, it's just sitting here. Speak of the devil. Or your ears burning? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to speak on the the floor. floor the floor treatment that we're doing under the HVAC units? Yeah. So basically, what we're doing is we're going in the mechanical room. We're putting uh, like a two by four trim around the room, all the way around it, and then shooting epoxy that will seal the floor and harden. Uh, once it does, it just makes like a big catch pan if you will so if you have a water leak or something you're sending it to a drain and or at least you're containing it to where it's not just you get a leak and then there it goes so it's just a containment type and this so, is in the, the fifth or fourth floor uh hbac room correct and that's the also one. so it's a fourth floor mechanical room that's on the, <laughs> the east side east is it i, I get yeah. spun around uh, and then also that includes the two systems that are being replaced during the reconstruction of the 30th. Okay. I believe that's on that quote as well. So that particular room that we're talking about on the fourth floor, it leaked right as we were finishing up the temporary courtroom and ruined a bunch of brand new sheetrock and uh, a bunch of ceiling tiles mm -hmm. that were all brand new and we had to start over again. Correct. So it's it's a preventative measure for for future. I mean, it's not a matter of, of if; it's a matter of when. Yeah, you just got you got a lot of water sources there. You have condensate, you got chilled water, you got steam, so you have got plenty of water sources there. Ricky, do you foresee wanting to do this for other rooms in the future when it comes time to replace? Yeah, and, and maybe even some that you know we had uh, a unit on uh, the first floor that's new. And we didn't do the floor during that period. So I don't know if it's something we could do after the fact or not, but it's a matter of kind of looking at it and seeing if it's doable or it's on the first floor, so you can it's not as bad as critical, but still. Is it on first floor A or first floor B? Uh first yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's right okay. by the front door. Yeah, yeah by the front door. There we go. <laughs> so, now which front door? Which front door? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Main door. Yeah. So yeah, I'd make a motion to approve this. This is second. This is a good preventative measure, it's like buying insurance. All right, we've got a motion by Commissioner Beecham, seconded by Commissioner Fincannon to approve and issue a PO for Armor Solutions proposal number 1054 in the amount of $7,596. Do we have any questions or comments on the motion or the item itself? All right. Motion is before us. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries 5 0. Item number five discuss, consider, and/or take action to accept one of three equipment trailer proposals for precinct four to be paid from fund 224 with lines determined by the county auditor. Commissioner Watts. Yes. Um, so the equipment trailer bids and Nancy may have to help me here um, do you want this is the back hole you're right here you go and mine's showing up in both um, Okay, um, so the equipment trailer was, uh, which we are wearing mark uh, plumb down, uh, and it's not really fair to 
going to continually have to be but they're they're having to move everything far so precinct four has something for precinct four to do leon has got to turn off and go, come do it for us and this allows us to have two now of those things so when road work begins we can actually get uh quicker equipment to the site and everything else is <coughs> constantly do it this particular bid is in stock it wasn't the cheapest the cheapest had the hydraulic axles underneath it which we considered a burden we wanted a hydraulic tailboard to go down and uh, just less to keep up with and so Bruckner's had the best uh, bid on this uh, and it's the uh, y'all see the winning bid deal after much discussion and consideration of walking through these three uh, trailers that one was um, the yellow house equipment as well as the second Bruckner trailer was not in stock and they couldn't commit to any kind of time this trailer's setting in Amarillo and able to move which, and which one Jeff? does what we needed to do which one the one that's marked winning bid go oh. go to the next item the backups in the wrong number Back there's the only sense. there's very little difference between the prices of the uh, it looks like there's about five hundred dollars this is a ninety nine thousand uh, dollar piece of equipment and the difference is uh, okay. five hundred gotcha. dollars roughly five hundred and forty one dollars actually the record is part of the co-op yes yes this is uh, but no the trailer the equipment trailer Jim is not these are the three bids oh you did bid it yes oh but, okay okay the Bruckner's is but the people that this uh, uh, Fontaine they don't belong gotcha So that would be my recommendation, is to purchase the Fontaine trailer from uh, Bruckner's Truck and Equipment and um, for the amount of $99,982, uh, which does include, um, I guess, everything. And they'll, they'll get it here, and so I'm going to make it for $99,982 even. <coughs> That's Second. my motion. Second. Oh, Commissioner Van Cannon already. Oh, you yeah, do. I'm yeah. sorry. Huh? Okay. Good. Jeff, do you mind? I remember when you could buy a regular for less than $99,000. Mm -hmm. I can remember a lot of things that <laughs> used to be less than $99,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Commissioner Watts has made. The motion to accept the uh, Bruckner's bid for the Fontaine trailer uh, for an amount of $99,982. Commissioner Finkannon has seconded that motion. Do we have any questions or comments on the motion or the item itself? All right, that motion is before us. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. All right. That takes us to item six, which is discuss, consider, and or take action to accept one of three backhoe trailer proposals for precinct four to be paid from fund 224 with lines determined by the county auditor. Mr. Watts? Yes, so uh, just a little to, to get us there uh, to this 
place last summer, the uh, precinct four was robbed in the middle of the night and they couldn't steal my backhoe trailer because it's set up to be pulled by a huge truck. And so they uh, took the backhoe and put it on precinct two's trailer, which is designed to pull with the pickup truck, which was what they were using to steal it with. And the my my service uh, one ton, not theirs. They <laughs> anyway, so I was very uh, I liked the uh, backhoe trailer in the backhoe. I actually had opted to redo that backhoe and keep it. The hours were low, and we had done that. We'd also uh, repaired and modified back about 2018 the equipment trailer to look sharp and good and did that work to it and so uh, it's stolen the back hole gets stolen and end of story so we get the new back hole and the new back holes now are not the same as old back holes and so the new back hole cannot go on the back hole trailer and so that's uh, it sets on Barry has the more modern style of trailer that actually hooks up and hauls with the dump truck like uh, this one will. It's a straight deck. The problem was the back hole can't go in between the fender welds on my trailer. It's too wide. Barry's is, can haul lots of things uh, because it's flat deck. No fenders in the way. Sets above the tires. Sets above the Actually, tires. Yeah. Pin pulled by a dump truck. And, so anyway, after going through those and discussing about the um, options of the trailer and, and looking through Barry's equipment, we've decided to take the low bid of the Yellow House equipment, which is a, a Belshi, which is a great brand of trailer. And uh, they do have it in stock and it was available. Uh, the other two were higher and were not in stock but the, um, it would be my motion that we uh, purchase from John Deere Yellow House the Belshi DT255 2EP in the amount of $20,082 even. Second. And a note to that, Precinct 2 still doesn't have a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> So there's going to need to be another. But you're, but there's I'm a good field right yeah, there. You can buy two. I'm <laughs> Isn't that the pits that you you borrow something from your buddy and you get it stolen? Precinct three has a seventy-five hundred dollars. <laughs> 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 that works great. That works great. <laughs> so that was a long time ago. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Watts has made the motion seconded by Commissioner Beecham to accept the Yellow House bid for the Belshi DT255 trailer at a cost of $20,082 even. We have any questions or comments on the motion or the item? Okay, that motion is before us. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Five zero. Item number seven: discussions regarding payroll policies and payment procedures for election workers. Commissioner Watts. Yes. Uh, I'm assuming Cheryl's not here today. Okay. So, Judge, it'd be my recommendation that we hold off this time until the auditor can be here to address some of these okay. questions. Is there any objection to tabling this discussion until? Cheryl sick today or listening or working from home or what? Do you know? I know she's not in the office today. I know we have a. We have a memo here for y'all guys. I didn't know exactly what we were going to be discussing yet. And if we want to put it off, we can. But this will give us for more information. Okay. This is about what we're we still roll. study. Yeah. yeah. Things like that. So y'all will have the information available. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, yeah. I, I do have a question about that. Is okay. this putting off poll worker pay? Is this going to stop? Is this going to keep them from being paid another week or two? This has nothing to do with poll worker pay. Poll worker pay has everything to do with basic information that we have and can verify. Okay. Is the poll worker pay been, have the checks been written? No. Will they be written before this meeting? 
it depends on when the, uh, I would assume if you put it to next Tuesday, then probably not because the next payroll is not going to be written until next Wednesday. So it is putting it off another week for workers that have already worked early voting and it is not putting it off. Okay. It's already being put off another week because we don't have a payroll till next week. Just asking. Yeah. Yes. This, it's not, not like, discussing. It doesn't change anything. It's not putting it off from our normal payroll. Cycle. Will it be on the next payroll cycle? Depends on whether or not what all we can get verified. We don't have everything what, what's verified. What's missing to be verified? Well, we still have several uh, new employees that we've never had before that we're missing doc documentation on. Does that affect on. the employees that you do have? Um, we don't have all the, according to the IRS, after 60 days of non-employment with the, with the employer, they are required to complete all new paperwork, which requires us to collect new social security and everything every time that they're out with more than 60 days so we have to verify that verify the accuracy verify nothing's changed verify all the other documents um, so we're uh, you just said something on I that. To clarify you just said that if a employee's not work for 60 days does that mean a separated employee or a a separated in if, if an employee leaves employment for more than 60 days they become a new employee again and they have to go through the new hire process not, again that's there's my issue right there Okay. Well, we've got uh, a we've got a motion to table this until next but week. Not but are second. we are we? There's not been. I know that's why I'm second. asking. Are we? That there's opposition to that motion. Well, I'm not. Maybe not yet. I, there's a couple of questions first because I mean the yeah. motion to table it's fine. I'm looking out for the citizens and the poll workers. I get that. If you're going to keep and and I in 2023 the last election there was some delay in paying poll workers. I just want the poll workers to know that. We are aggressively trying to get their pay. We I want them to know that, and if coming from me, that I want them to know that. Because I've had a lot of people asking about their checks, so I want them to know that I'm trying my best to get answers done. We, we've had communication between our office and the other offices to try to make sure and have a list of everything that we need to be collecting, and we are working to get that information. Corey, I've got one question that is probably we need to talk about today, and we can talk about a, a bigger picture. Right now, is it the auditor's office policy to hold the pay of some election workers whose information is in based on the fact that other election workers' information is not in? Our, our policy is to work to get everything in together at one time and try to get everything done in one specific pay period so that we don't have multiple pay periods covering several so Who knows how long before so we somebody is completely completely brought in and has all their paperwork filed they're not getting paid because someone else hasn't done well this becomes this becomes more than just a so it take elections completely out of it if i hired a new person in hr they would have to complete all their they paperwork, would complete all their they paperwork but you if, you, if i hired down. 15 people in hr and only 13 of them completed their stuff we're gonna we're gonna hold all of their pay until all 15 of them complete their stuff. Well, they're all 15 gonna have their stuff completed before they start their. But job. you're not gonna withhold pay. To I'm any not gonna withhold pay because they're all gonna have their job done before they even start working. So what? But I'm understanding we're holding pay for for some that have done everything that they need to do. Technically, we're not holding pay for anybody right now because we haven't verified everything to begin with to hold the pay. You what hired you? people. To, had a job, they knew what their hourly pay was, they're expecting a check, and they're calling now and to know where their money at. How do you figure that's not holding your pay? Because we have to verify the accuracy of the information before we can pay them. That's right, you have to. Exactly. So why haven't we That's not holding pay, that's verifying accuracy of information we have, that we, we do not have. We have a very difficult time getting poll workers as it is. It's, it's extremely difficult to, to fill those positions and it's hypercritical that we get the job of elections done correctly. And now we're holding up pay we are for not a very holding pay right now. We are. We are not because we haven't verified the accuracy of the information. That's, that's, that's not holding pay. Look, Corey, I've got They're doing on that so I'm so I'm clear. What if we just waited? What if we waited to the very end of the year? We worked them the first of the year, but we just don't verify the information until December. Then it, we pay them, and or we maybe verify it and get it all done. So January of 2025, we 
can budget, we'll have a good idea this summer how much money we've spent this time. We just didn't pay them. We can hold their pay? No. Why? I mean, you haven't ver you wouldn't have verified it, so it must be okay. I don't even understand why you're even questioning holding it to the end of the year. Oh, be until it's verified, <laughs> is two months okay, or is three months okay, or Six is months, two weeks okay, or years? Is that up to the auditor to decide? Or we're, I don't we're understand. We're not making those point. decisions. We're creating a list. We're trying to get the documentation so that we can process this. The problem is that we did not pay it last pay period was because we did not receive the information in time to verify all the accuracy well, of it must not be incorrect to not pay it so why if How it's not incorrect it's... why wouldn't we just hold them off we'd have no election workers but then we could budget i mean right on the spot how would you know it's not it's incorrect or not incorrect you're telling me that that's like i'm saying i have not coming from you, seen not all the information to verify that everything is correct to pay just don't when verify. I see the That's information. What I'm saying. Just don't. So you, you have all the information. Just so, don't. So basically, you're asking yeah, me well, to uh, go are, against the IRS and go against the law and pay people, people regardless just you're because you're telling you me so. that's how that works. No, I'm it, saying that we verify how, the how accuracy of information. How difficult could it be to verify former employees that they're that they've given the same thing over again? So if they if they go get their name changed and their social security card is changed. And we file on that old social security you're, you're, card, you're, you're, we are you're, violating you're, the law. You're, you're doing schematics here. Let me ask you a question. We as the commissioner's court, we do the, the pay for the county. So if we up and decide right now as a court that we just want to hold your pay hold in it. the auditor's office, is that something we can legally do? No. I mean, it doesn't this doesn't make sense at all. No. Okay. Well, all I'm gonna say is every one of you has had the opportunity, every one of you's had these questions, and every one of you knows where my office is. Well, we if have you want list. to come to my office and sit down well, we're and have a discussion right and try to work things out, we're asking that's your right business. Now, in a public forum, which Yo, is, which is what we're forum. supposed to do. You can also do it outside of that and not have to create a, a issue on the outside. But it is you an have the opportunity when to our discuss this are ahead of time. Contacted by angry people not getting their paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. And they think and it's they think it's coming from commissioners' court. Well, and I I want to make a statement here to the public and to you and the other commissioners and the judge. The county auditor, Cheryl Jones, very disrespectful today by not coming to court and talking about this. I don't see how you this, can say that. She knew it was on the agenda. She knew what the discussion was. And it's completely disrespectful that she didn't show up. I disagree with that. And so and she just, is not I, by I, law required to be in this meeting ever. And Corey, so. I'm, I'm all about coming to your office and sitting down and visiting. But I haven't had the time because I've been dealing with other auditor problems prior to getting to yours. Which other auditor problems? I, I have a lease problem right now going on that we're okay. withholding okay. payment. Do you no, want to discuss this lease? We can. Do you no, want to no, discuss no, no. this lease? No, I'm just wanting exactly. to clarify. I like the fact that, hey, come to my office. Come to my office. That I like that statement. But when you don't have time because you can't get caught up from the other, something's wrong with the equation there's yeah, nothing wrong with the equation the equation is how the lease right was now. done we're asking questions and we're not getting answers we're not you're not getting them. answers i've already I answered don't all of your questions your answer and you're not my answer is i have well. not verified the documentation you, you, the time you, 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 you we're cross talking we need to let folks you went answer. with a semantical answer and didn't answer the question we we have people that have filed all their necessary paperwork and you said you went around about saying yeah. you we're not we're withholding their pay, and, and we have not withheld their pay. You are. We have not. We have not received all the information in time to get it all, all right. verified prior to the last payroll. Which there has take, not been another payroll take, between here and there. We'll so take we're not a holding anything. We'll take John Jones. He's filed all every bit of the, everything that he has to file. Mm -hmm. He's given every piece of paperwork necessary. Has John Jones been paid? John Jones has not provided everything at this point in time. He do may have provided his W-4. Robin, Robin, do we have election workers that have filed everything yes. that they're required to file? The Thursday before the last pay period, I submitted all of the early voting time sheets and all of the W-4s for the people that were required to turn those in to the office on Thursday. Do we, are we lacking anything from not anybody? 
there were some that were. Uh, early voting, there was 39 people that could have been paid that I submitted on Thursday. There were six people still missing. All right, so Friday, for six I, people, Friday, we're holding I up this. election day. Um, and there was 49 people that could have been paid. 41 were still outstanding. That was the Thursday, Friday, prior to the Friday pay period. Judge they had timesheets and w oh, So, yeah, do, do you have a motion? There is, the, the motion was made to table. There wasn't a second. Well, which there was a we, Which we're gonna need to do oh, with it. Yeah, I was gonna second the motion to table and we'll get this worked out. I mean, we need to solve it, but I don't know that we're making a lot of headway, but. Well, I, well I'll the just department it. head needs to be here. Right, I, I agree with that. What, but I don't, can, wanna, can you tell me what verify means? That means that I have all the documentation to verify that the hours are correct and that everything is correct to be paid. I have to verify the social securities that they're correct in How the payroll system. Those? Viewing the social security card. Excuse me? Viewing the social security card. No, sir. I mean, how else can you do it? Because I'm pretty sure there's a there's a federal statute right now that says that employers not required to get a social security card. It's, social security. Do you, it's can, it's not a federal statute, but if you go to the SSA.gov on their website, it says please do not refer people back to the social security office if they don't have a copy of their card. It's not required. Um, there is a free online system with SSA.gov where you if if you if you. Feel like you need to verify their social security number. You can log on and verify through that system. It is not required to um, have a copy of their their actual card. And as far as verifying the times, the payroll sheets were submitted on Thursday and Friday of that week before. The same payroll type sheets that we do for every other department in the county. They're the, well, no, they're election payroll. I mean, they're they're not payroll sheets. They're, they're the standard payroll sheets. No they're not on time clock plus. No. They are not. No, okay. they are handwritten sheets, and those okay. were all submitted. Okay. I will. I will. I want to let y'all know one thing that there is some poll workers that have texted thanking for us trying to fight for their pay. They uh, they would like to get it resolved. Yeah, it, it, it needs to be resolved. And the point well, about the fact that it's very difficult to find them is, is a good one, and we need to get it well, solved. I don't want to stall it any longer. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why, why well, I would talk about it. I mean, it now. just for clarification purposes, as I was with Tanya at her convention for insurance last week, and I discussed with the auditors, they had no clue what I was speaking of in this regard. I, I, I said, What is your policy? So I understand. They said, State that again. Tell me why you got to do that. But we choose to be a Mohican to some extent. And first, I was told that it was the law. And then, secondly, I'm told it's the rule. Who told you it was the law? Cheryl. And then, at, in a committee meeting, and then I'm told that no, it's just the policy. So, which time was incorrectly stated? Is it the law or is it a rule? Nevertheless, we need to have the, the department head here to discuss these and make because it's not fair that uh, this is. Do you know? How many, oh, hold on. How many poll that, workers are, are you there? making the motion that we, well, that that we, we table stop this discussion? discussion? Okay, then. The motion has been made. It's by Commissioner Watson, seconded by Commissioner Mahler. We need yeah, to we need to vote on the motion to postpone. And Corey, Corey, you can't fix this, can you? I mean, it, I mean, are you able to pay these people right immediately? No, I'm not able to pay them immediately. I'm so I mean, whenever that, I we're, get, whenever I we're spending our money in the next the payroll process, it, yeah. we're spending Let our. Let me ask this: Is it going to be on our next payroll sheet to pay? It depends on what all I'm able to get accomplished before then. You know this. This, 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 this form he yeah. stated here that he's that he handed us says on here that employee has to be separated from employment to have to refill out this paperwork again. And that is publication 15 that says that. But these employees are not separated. They might be inactive, but they are not separated. And if that auditing department has the ability to separate employees without discussing that with department heads, that's a way bigger issue than what we're even talking about here. But these are not separated. So Corey, you're. Let me stop. The motion has been made by Commissioner Watts to postpone discussion until next week. 
It's been seconded by Commissioner Mahler. We're going to take a vote on the motion right, right now to postpone. All those in favor of the motion to postpone until next week okay. say can I ask, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, does it have to be postponed next week? Can we call a special session? Uh, there, we need to get this. We could postpone. Forward. We could call a special session, but our time frame for doing so now, because of 72 it's hours, it yeah. is going to be yeah. Friday afternoon at the earliest. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not. My point in this, not put it off, but we got to get the right person, you know, to get this done. We need. We, need we definitely need help for more than. Corey can't make a decision on yes. it. He can't make a decision on this without Cheryl. Yeah. And Cheryl doesn't feel the need to come in and, and speak with us. So we're going to postpone it if she didn't show up next time? I think that right now the motion is before us to postpone until next week. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Nay. Aye. Nay. Right. Nay. So the motion to postpone fails two to three. So we're, we'll keep discussion going on this today. Well, once again, the goal is to get the right people. I mean, that's the whole. Well, and I understand yeah. that, but yeah. so the right people aren't here, and yeah. we, we have an ongoing <laughs> problem that's not going to be resolved. Yeah. I'm I'm going to make a motion to postpone in just a second, but I, there's there's a couple things that I, I do want clarification on because of the time sensitive nature because we're going to be running up against another payroll period coming up. Corey, I think I asked this before, but I may not have, I may not have been clear in my question. Is it the policy for payroll for election workers to hold the pay of those who have given the full information that's needed to verify identity You've got everything that's been requested and that you need. Is it the policy to hold those people's pay while you wait on that same information for other people that are election workers? We would, we don't really have a technical policy. We would prefer to have everything paid in one payroll or if it's early voting, obviously it's going to go over two different payrolls just because uh, the time frames. So from the standpoint of I'm not I'm not trying to trick you here. No. I, I'm, from the standpoint of paying the folks who have given all of their information that y'all have requested, it is a it's a policy choice. It is a choice made by the auditor's office to not pay those folks while you wait on other people's information. For election day, when we have to do the billing, we try to get our our process is to try to get everybody into one payroll to minimize the billing efforts. Okay, so it, it is a policy choice made by the auditor's yes. office. Okay. I have a question for Tanya. Go ahead. When a person separates their employment from Wichita County, what is the process? When they separate? Yeah, when, when any any department, say, I had someone at Road Bridge separate. What's what's the process for a Road Bridge employee to separate employment from what's talking about? It's you do a payroll delete slip. You send it over through the benefits um, through benefits email, and then we make sure that and through that process, everybody that's connected, uh, Sonia with uh, insurance, um, IT, that everybody that needs to cut that person off is alerted and they do their part okay is that a written policy or is that just a, a departmental policy from HR and and from the auditor I'd have to go look at the policy manual okay. specifically but that's the process that's and the that's, process mm -hmm, and the supervisor that the starts that process mm -hmm. Robin I have a question for you yes did any of that process ever take place with any of our election yes, workers sir. So we have not separated their employment. Correct. They're still They're an active employee because we have never done taken steps to terminate their employment. Correct. They're just in a suspended status. Correct. They're we, just either inactive or suspended status. Correct. But they are not. They are not separated employees. And I know before we we had like uh, deputies that uh, they work on an on-call basis or whatever. They're part still part of our staff, but they're not regular staff. Am I correct in that? Reserves. Reserves. I think, well, they're not but paid either. They're not paid. Okay. All right. Well, never mind. Okay. I think poll so. workers, election workers, have a, a different standing through 
payroll law. I mean, there's they a- They are different. They're exempt from federal uh, income tax withholdings. You don't have to do Medicare and Social Security up to the 2700 or $2,500 limit. Um, so they, are, they do have different rules because they are classified differently according to the IRS, yes. Here's what I, I find very hard to understand in all of this. We're, we're being bureaucratic and making extra steps that we don't have to take. Correct. Especially an employee that's been an employee for years. Correct. And a lot of these election workers are. They come back year after year. And they're generally a retired person. Uh, their status, their personal status hasn't changed. They're not going out and getting name changes. They're not, they're not, usually not getting remarried or anything. So. I don't understand why we're, give, we're making a, a bureaucratic step, adding more additional paperwork and more steps into our process that don't have to be. Why we can't just hold them in employment status and require them to file a piece of paper that says, hey, I've had no, no changes in status well, since their, I last worked. Yeah, and on their payroll sheets, the, the, and we could you know, early voting payroll sheets that are exactly the same. They put their name, they put their address, they put their phone number, they put their social security number, and they also sign it. So all of that information so, but, is on the actual time well, sheet. We never terminated any of them. No, we never terminated any of them. No. So everyone that worked the previous election, is, we, we correct. They're they're still employed by Wichita County. Correct. We, so we're we're making them do additional paperwork just because we want to. Every year um, no, I'm going to, so I see Wilmer shaking his head that they are not no. still employees of. Let me put it like this. I am a former tax examiner of the Texas Workforce Commission. I can tell you from my, from my basis, and we work closely with the IRS, that you have to have that documentation. You have to act now. I, I, I don't disagree with you. We, we've got the documentation. We've had every it every long. other every other employee for the county has to have all that in before they start work. Sure, and I guess the question, Wilmer, is for those who have my, worked. Yeah, my name is James. Is James. I'm sorry, James. Uh, my apologies. Um, my question is for those who we've we've already got that information because they've worked for us before. Well, but, but, but if they haven't worked for 60 days, they are no longer an active employee. They are no longer an employee. They are an employee. They're just not in active status. And therefore, well, we, we've had people out for well more than 60 days across other departments that have been sick and be on FMLA and other things, and we've never had them go back and file a new I mean, this wouldn't have been a, this would not have been a problem. I mean. It, I know that Cheryl sent out an email at the end of January stating that all this information had to be collected and it was not collected. It was collected and it's been submitted for the ones that I have. It was collected. But for everybody, before they're even allowed to go to work. A W-4 is not required because we don't withhold federal income tax. The, we're not going to have audience well, discussion, the discussions with the court. Um, there's there's a, a number of di different issues here. We've already talked about the one with we're, we're holding some people's pay based on other people's information and not having it. Um, the the sixty days thing. I mean, I, I saw that in publication fifteen of the IRS. That appears to be dealing with new hire registry uh, information and making sure that if it's been longer than 60 days, even not dealing with what does separation mean, that that's the information you have to give to the new hire registry. Not dealing with it all of a sudden enacts the need to have folks bring all of their new paperwork again. I reached out to four different counties myself and other folks reached out to an additional six more big counties, small counties, and none of them, none of them do it this way. 
None of them require election workers every year to come in and provide new verification. Now, it's possible that we're the only ones doing it right and everyone's doing it wrong. What, what counties were those? They were, hold on, Tom Green, Kep Collin, Brown, Randall, Ellis, Brazoria, Denton, and Taylor County. Our peer counties. There are peer counties. And again, maybe we're, we've got something right that everyone else says wrong, but I think what, when I looked at this item on the agenda, I kind of wanted a clarification of what we are doing because it's a policy choice made by the auditor's office versus what is required by law. And there seems to be a pretty big discrepancy over what's required by law um, based on y'all's reading of it versus what other counties and what I, what I would do it. I'm not an attorney though, so um, I don't know that I have a real question there other than the decision to require all of the documents. What are the documents that are required for a returning employee? Someone who's, who's done, who's been a poll worker before. We require them to complete the W-4, the social security and the driver's license. Question. W-4, what is the W-4? What is it for? <coughs> Just because it's required. No, what is it for? What is a W-4 form for? For taxes, federal taxes. Federal withholdings? Mm -hmm. Can you show me why it's required for a poll worker to have it? Where is that at? Is it on your package that you gave us? Well, it's in publication 15 that each new employee to complete the, w the W-4. Can I ask, Robin, can you explain that to me about poll workers? Uh, they're exempt from uh, federal income tax, so there's no reason to collect the W-4 because we do, they're exempt. Okay. They're, and that's, in the, that's also in that publication 15 that indicates that poll worker, election workers are exempt from uh, federal withholdings. And we've been withholding federal taxes from no, them? No, we have not. We've never withheld. So if we've never withheld federal income taxes from a poll worker, why do we require them to fill it out? Because that's part of the new, new uh, hire process. That's a new hire for a regular employee, not a poll watcher. Can you explain to me why we would do that to a poll worker? That's poll what workers asking. still have the opportunity to, to uh, have the withholding taken from their checks if they choose to. Can I? If, if they opt to, uh, Collin County does not offer that as an option. That's a voluntary agreement that if they do want you to withhold federal income tax, um, they can fill out a W-4 and submit that to you. Um, most, I would say Collin County doesn't even offer that as, a, as an Prior. option to their poll workers. Okay. Um, and then um, I don't understand, I was also told back in November that the W-4s were not used for uh, income tax withholding, it was to verify information, but the information that is on a W-4 is the exact same information that is on their timesheet, which is their name, their address, their signature, and their social security number. At, at this point, I'm going to make my motion to. Oh, well, I just okay. one final quick. I want to be clear. Corey, did you develop this policy or did Cheryl develop this policy? I mean, we're just going by the information that we have in front of us. No, that doesn't answer that is, my question. That is true. That's I mean, I, I'm specific. Nobody's developed a policy. We have an office that we consult with each other and we discuss the policies. You the and rules. her collectively talked about this would be the best plan? Yes that you and her together yes, decided this is this. the way that that it should be done okay. i mean in it, going through the information and trying to determine what's the best way and make sure that we cover ourselves in case we get ever get sent into a dol audit or audit or a twc audit or an irs audit we're trying to make sure that we cover all our, our tracks so uh, so to make it more convenient so you in paying our pay removal those individuals that have filed everything that they need to file are being held up and being paid just out of convenience for a county office. Oh, Over okay. a decision that hasn't hurt this point in time, we have not withheld anybody's pay. Yeah, we have. We have not. <laughs> okay. They haven't been paid. And we also fast. haven't received all the information to verify everything. Some of them have, though. Some of them have turned, most of them have turned in all their information. We'll, do, we'll agree to disagree. I'm going to make the motion that we postpone further discussion of this until 
court next Tuesday. Uh, I think it's I think it's some moderately unfair to Corey to put well, him in this just, position. Just so I'm clear, and Melvin, you'll have to interject here. Is it not the ability of this court to actually subpoena someone to be at court if they refuse to come to court? Do we have that ability as this court uh, to make that happen? Because for these people to remain unpaid for this period of time under living in the environment we live in, does whether, this court whether have be, the, whether it can be to an elected official or a appointed official? I'd have to look for you, Jeff. An appointed yeah. official, not elected yes, official. Yes. That, because that evidently we're, we're not going to be able to get. We can't work things out unless we have the people involved here. And we do need the people involved here. I'm going to defend. I don't know. I don't know why Cheryl's not here. The agenda item was posted late Friday. She may have a doctor's appointment. She may have had a long-standing. So I think that it would be unfair to say that she is not here because of this specific item. We don't know that. I don't know that. And I've known she wasn't going to be here today for over a week. So, so I don't know why it's not my business to know why, but I've known she's not going to be there for with a that, week. So. With that said, there's, there'll be plenty of time to now to know that for next week that we're here. I understand the, the importance of the promptness and of, the, of doing something quickly, but I also don't think we can have a full can, discussion can, needed fix, without can I ask one question before we do that can we include those individuals who have completed all of their paperwork <coughs> on the next pay sheet on the next payroll depends on I, I have some people that yes I could include on the next payroll and I have some that I still don't have all the documentation well you could have well, I, I, I just, I just said Listen to me closely. And I'm listening Those to you closely, but the problem is information in. The problem is no, it's going no, to no, be no, no, in no, because no I problem. still have some payroll information that I have not received on the people it, that have turned I in all I had a very simple question. And I gave you a Those that have answer. all of their necessary paperwork in, can we include those on the next payroll? We could, but I'm not saying I, that they have everything I, turned in. As part of the motion, I'm making, I'll make the motion to table this with the caveat that we include all the personnel that have filed all their necessary paperwork included on the next payroll. There's no reason to withhold theirs. None. He can't do that. that you don't yeah. know that. He can't do that because his boss won't let him. You don't know that. I mean, that's, I we control that's, payroll. That's not. Evidently. Made a motion to table. Commissioner Second. Watts has seconded the motion. We're going to vote on the motion to table discussion of this until next Tuesday at Commissioner's Court. All those in favor of the motion to table until next Tuesday, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. 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 Okay. With a vote of three to two, the ayes being Commissioner Watts, Commissioner Mahler, Judge Johnson, the nays being Commissioner Buchanan and Commissioner Beecham. The discussion on item seven is tabled until next week. Let's all take a breath. <laughs> item number eight, receive <laughs> update on courthouse renovations, elevator projects, and county courthouse annexes. Commissioner Beecham. Uh, things are going, continue to go really well on, on all the projects, annex, most of the plumbing fixtures have been set in the, in the restrooms, still awaiting the toilet petitions. Um, that may hold us up a few more weeks. Um, we're starting the sheetrock back in the annex uh, tax area. We did have to relocate a window that was not correctly installed, so that slowed, it, slowed us down a little bit yesterday. Sorry, where was that? In the in the tax office. Oh, tax yeah, office. yeah. Uh, it, just a window into the hallway. Oh, okay. It was improperly located. So, the rest of that's going really well. Uh, here at the courthouse, the 30th District Court. They, if you can go up there now and see the the, the bench, the, at least the bones of the bench are in place, uh, which gives us a very good look at how it's all going to interact. Um, we're making some minor modifications as we go along because 
now that we can see it in space there's some some issues that we had to work through but it, it's just part of the process sure. it's one thing to draw it on paper it's something else to see it in person so uh, still continue with that uh, painters are on site today to do some touch-up paint on the rest of the courthouse uh, everything's flowing good uh, work work is going well good we're a year out tomorrow I think yeah from the flood no it was a year ago a week ago on the 20th I thought it was the 28th I think it was the 20th okay we're around we're, a year we're right, yeah. we're right at a year we're right at a year from the flood so the all right antediluvian time yes <laughs> nice word all right thank you for that update do we have any questions or comments on item number eight Okay, it's 11-12 and court is adjourned.